Hi, this is Ariel from France. Bonjour. Welcome to my channel where we create fun costumes and weird stuff. Today I will be making my own version of Cinderella, very much inspired by the 2015 Disney adaptation, but make it dark. And hopefully I can finish it in time for Halloween. And I want to use materials that I already have. I already made a giant tulle petticoat, I will link the video over here. So I need to make a velvet bodice, a tulle shoulder piece, and all the pumpkin decoration. Let's get to work! The first thing to do was to draft the bodice on my mannequin. I'm using some leftover fabric for this. It's just a cotton with some Batman printed on it. I don't know, I thought it was fun. And it's a bat, so it's Halloween, I guess. As you can see, I'm doing this with the petticoat on the mannequin because the size of that thing drastically alters the shape of the mannequin. And I want my bodice to fit on those big hips. The bodice is made of two pieces in the front and just two pieces in the back. And it will be worn with a little waist cincher underneath, so I am not making a real corset here. I took all those pieces off the mannequin and marked the placement of the pins with a red marker. And I used that to trace them onto a new paper. With this little tracing wheel. Une roulette, en français. I can then use the paper to trace the line a bit better. And then to make a mock-up, I used again this Batman fabric. I really simply assembled all the pieces, and then I tried it on with the corset and the petticoat. And it was not too bad! Actually, it was good enough that I could make a few alterations, and I will use this as a lining, I guess. Because I'm not a very serious person, and I guess I want to have some fun with night costumes. I realized that I don't have enough boning for what I want now. I want some small ones like this. And in my stash, I just have reeds or this one, which is too big. Hmm. So I'm going to destroy this. Take it apart and use it for other projects. I've always wanted to remake this one because it's actually made to fit a wooden mannequin. It does not fit me at all and if I want to wear it, I have to remake it. Because it looks like a corset, but the construction is not great. Hey, this is the same fabric I used on the petticoat. Snake. I'm sorry if it's painful to watch, but I am destroying this. I want to take the boning that is inside and also I want to use the eyelets because they are black and right now I only have uh, silver ones so I think those black ones will look a lot better with my uh, Cinderella bodies. I will keep this maybe for another project. I don't know yet what it's going to be. Tell me if you have an idea. So now I'm using the eyelets that I am attaching to the lining. The bat lining, I should say. On the center front, I'm attaching just a piece of twill, and this will serve as a boning channel. I am adding boning on each of the seams, so I'm using the seam allowance here. Just folding it flat and sewing a row of stitching to create the channel for the boning inside. And now I can insert all the boning that I cut to the correct size. It's all plastic, so not a strong boning, but that's okay because it's not a corset. The boning is just to provide structure to the garment because the curve at the waist is very curvy and the boning will help prevent the fabric from making little folds. You'll see. Okay, the base is done. I have all my boning in place. I'm just adding a little tape at the waist so it should reduce the stress on the fabric here. Waist tape, it plays. I tried to sew it on the original seam so it's not really visible. And it worked. Well, not great here. And here I completely missed it, but it's fine, it works. Next, velvet. Now I am ironing some velvet. And with velvet, you cannot really iron it flat like you would another fabric. 
I don't know if you can see, but I'm keeping the iron a few millimeters off the fabric. Otherwise, you would crush the velvet and completely ruin the effect. It is left over from a project from a friend a long time ago. I'm trying to fit all my pattern pieces on those scraps. And remember that I have to add all the sewing allowance. This is one centimeter all around. Oh, and another thing with velvet. Remember that this fabric has a direction. It means that all the little fibers, they are facing up or down. For example, those two pieces are in the same direction. See, if you look on the side, the light hits them the same way. But if you have one on the other way and you look at different angles, it looks completely different. I have made that mistake before and it could really mess how the garment looks. So keep that in mind if you use velvet. Now I'm assembling all the velvet pieces. Except for the front side seams. I realized that I sewn this the wrong way. So I ripped it and I'm sewing it again on the other side. Because I don't want this on my skin. Plus it's fun, so I want it on the outside. The inside is just me. Okay. And I am attaching the velvet to the eyelet parts. This I have to do by hand because I am attaching it almost on the bone. So I can still have a piece of the vinyl, 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 sexy vinyl visible. Okay, this is what I meant when I didn't want to attach the front. I'm pinning those pieces on myself while I am wearing the fitted uh, lining. That way I can avoid a lot of wrinkles of the velvet. The downside is that I pricked myself many times. But that's okay, because you can't see blood on black velvet. <laughs> and now to sew all this by hand. Although velvet is really difficult to sew by machine, because it, it just shifts around, it's just, ah, it's terrible. But also, sewing it by hand is really nice. Okay, I have sewn these lines. And now I just have to close the bottom to attach the two layers together and after that a bias. So I cut a piece of uh, straight velvet that I use for binding for my edges on the bottom and the top. I'm sewing it on one side by machine and then folding it and closing it by hand, same way as before. Bottom is done, now I am doing the top part. And of course, don't forget to put the boning inside before you are closing the top and the bottom. I'm not saying I forgot, but... Uh, <sighs> Anyways, so this is what the lining looks like from the inside. Now I am doing a mini reveal. Because that velvet bodice with those velvet gloves and the tool, I think it really looked so glamorous that I might have spent a few hours pretending to be a 50s movie star, even though it was hard to fit anywhere in my apartment. Moving on, now for the fun decoration. So for the vines, I will be using this fabric that I had in my stash for a very long time because it is not great quality and it has a lot of texture. I think it will go great with the rest of the assemble. So I fold it in half and then I will use my machine to make all the vines. Inventing the shape as I saw, I'm not gonna trace it. I want it to look more organic, so I don't have to make it very geometric. I am sewing general vines shaped. I make them really irregular, so they don't look too much like tentacles. Although that would be a cool Ursula costume, maybe? Okay, no, focus. <laughs> cutting out all those shapes so I could turn them inside out. And also fill them with some stuffing. Here you can see the remain of an old pillow. If things tend to disappear in my house, it's because I put them in my costumes. The stuffing took quite a while. I 
I wanted them to be a little more stiff than they were, so I ended up using some wire that I stuffed inside, cutting it to the right length, and then I used pliers to fold the edges so they won't poke through my fabric, if that makes sense. I made 10 big vines like that, and I pinned them on a strip of twill tape that I put around the waist of my dress. I added another twill tape to make a neat waistband. To those big vines, I wanted to attach a lot of little ones, so I cut the leftover fabric into strips, and I sewed them shut to make a lot of tiny tubes. I turned them inside out using this big safety pin, and then I could put some more wire inside them, so they will have a little bit more stiffness. Then I'm just adding them here and there, trying to make the thing look nice, and also a bit random. I wanted the whole thing to look a little bit organic, so it doesn't have to be really precise. Now I'm preparing the shoulder part, which is just a bunch of tool that is pinned there. It doesn't have to be really precise either, because I'm going to add a little more decoration on it. These are just the strips that I had left over from cutting my tulle petticoat. I'm sewing it by hand, here and there on the tulle, hoping for the best. I made a few more vines to decorate it, this time smaller than the ones on the skirt still with the little wire inside. And now I'm also pinning the vines on the collar. This dress is now becoming a little bit too dangerous because it is completely covered in pins, so I can now sew all my vines by hand. Please enjoy my classy pyjamas that I made myself with IKEA blankets. And slight side note, at that point, I had a package arrive from Japan, because I don't know if you remember my video about making some cat's eye costumes, but this was for an international contest, and we won the comedy award. <laughs> this is my first costume trophy, and I love it. <laughs> Very proud of this comedy trophy. <gasps> 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 Comment c'est trop beau Putain, c'est un vrai trophée, quoi Ah, c'est trop cool Ok, back to the dress, I needed some more decoration. So I redid the house for the Halloween decoration. I got some plastic pumpkins and some fake leaves, but I think I'm going to repaint everything. I'm using some acrylic paint, just a coat of black over everything, including the leaves. Acrylic paint stays flexible, so it won't crack. And instead of painting some colors, I am using glitter. Just putting some glitter into transparent glue, and I'm using that to paint some highlights on the leaves and the pumpkins. Do glitter make you happy too? Some studies show that humans are really drawn to shiny things because of our basic need for water. Because in nature, the only shiny thing is the sun reflecting on water. I don't know how accurate it is, but I like the fact that I have a basic need for glitter. My orange pumpkins look maybe a bit too cheap for decorating a dress, so I am adding rhinestones. And then a coat of varnish to seal the glitter and keep it from going anywhere. The little pumpkins have wires that I can stab my dress with, and I have to sew all the leaves by hand. Even though it's black, I think this concept is faithful to the character. What do you think? Maybe the fairy godmother mixed the carriage and the dress? I don't know. I don't have a garden to show the dress outside, so I had a little fun with my green screen. Can you give a like to this video before you see it? Just in case. Allez, bisous. Hey you! Guess what? 
Can you help me put my dress on? I'm already too late for Halloween and I have to edit the video, so can you do the... You know, I'll turn it into something new. Oh, no, no. I spent a lot of time making it. I just did a magic dresser thing. But you wouldn't mind if I cheer it off of it? Wouldn't mind a nice blue? No, it's it's black. It's, it's the whole uh, dark Cinderella thing. Uh, can you... I understand. <laughs> ah. Now, come on. Off you go. Quick. Just a moment. It's my face and hair, right? It's not ruin the whole look. Quick, quick. Really quite hideous. I'll make sure they don't recognize you. Mm. Mm. A wig? Yes. And you find that really comfortable. Now come on, off you go. 